LSD are more interchangeable. And I've even seen people uh, call it PO. Uh, and that sounds a little worse. So I, I say PICO, but interventions and comparators are comparable. Okay, I got you. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Thanks. Yes, of course. And so okay. basically, if you have a question that can be framed in terms of population and out uh, interventions and outcomes, and you're combining and comparing studies to do so, then you are all good. For instance, you could say for, you know, population of COVID patients, uh, uh, those who got vaccines, uh, how did those vaccines perform with respect to adverse events? Uh, yeah. Though I will actually be using an example for the rest of this from my own discipline, uh, mm -hmm. where we'll go over PICO and I'll show you exactly how I built out um, the uh, the PICO for a recent review that we published. Okay, good um, good stuff. Yeah, and so I, I can go much more into the methods uh, uh, of this, but I just wanna zoom out and say, if you're starting your review, start from your research question framed simply in terms of for population P, how do interventions I and C compare with respect to O outcomes? Mm -hmm. And the first step of your actual review is going to be taken directly from that. You can even think of your study design as just building out how your research question will be answered. And you can see from my slides here that the first thing you're going to do is draft a search strategy uh, based on that. So the <laughs> place that you uh, can you know, stumble over your first hurdle is translating your research question into a good search strategy. Right, 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 right. Okay, and I think that that's the thing that it makes everybody nervous is finding a search strategy that works, that finds the right number of papers where the papers that you find are actually relevant to the search that you're doing. It, it, it's absolutely, uh, uh, and I, I always frame this in terms of your search strategy should be bringing back as many relevant articles as possible but as few others as possible as well. And I've gotten the question so many times and we try to put this in our materials, but I, I, I always get heart palpitations when I see people who have like 3000 study searches. And so I'm just gonna throw some rules of thumb out there for, the, yeah. for any no, uh, novice reviewers. I would say your first search does not need to be the most comprehensive search in the world, especially if you're uh, using nested knowledge. We take a sort of updatable uh, living approach to review where you can start with a search that only brings back my recommendation is usually 200 records or fewer. Mm -hmm. You review those, you can include and exclude, and then you can adjust your search strategy. Now, I know that different institutions have different practices there, but that's my strong personal recommendation that if you uh, want to be successful in this, you want to make sure that you're bringing back relevant records before you set yourself up with too many thousands of records to review. Okay, that's quite an interesting idea. And actually, that's a strategy that I have never employed. So this is the first time that I've ever been given that advice. And, and I've been around the houses, by the way, on LitReview. And in actual fact, I've even got a course that I created on how to do a LitReview. <laughs> that's on